it's Michelle. Welcome to Six Things, more or less. Today is Casho e Pepe. Casho e Pepe. It is the hottest dish on the restaurant scene right now, which is kind of funny because it's a dish my grandma used to make over the sink when she ran out of sauce. That's how simple this is. You can make the entire thing during the time that your pasta's cooking. Casho e Pepe is a Roman recipe. In fact, the title of it is in Roman dialect. Casho means cheese and pepe is pepper. Cheese and pepper, couldn't be more simple. You're gonna find dozens of recipes for casho e pepe and dozens of ways that different chefs make it. In a restaurant, it's gonna cost anywhere from $12 all the way up to $25, depending on what part of the country you're in. We're gonna make it at home for about 75 cents a serving. The traditional Roman way. The things that I'm gonna be using today, and I can't say six because I'm only using four, are pecorino romano cheese, cracked pepper, spaghetti, and salt. That's it. That's all you need to make this dish. But I'm gonna show you a couple of really great techniques that are gonna make you cook it like the best chef out there. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is salt our pasta water. Remember, always, always, always salt your pasta water. My water is boiling. A tablespoon, heaping salt. And remember, never, never, never add your salt to your water before it boils, because it'll take forever to boil. I like pasta that's made and packaged in Italy from Italian wheat, add a nice manciata, as they say in Italy, a handful. Push that down into the boiling water, and it will stop boiling when you put the pasta in. Anytime you add something to boiling water, it does change the temperature of the water, so it does take a moment or two for that water to start boiling again with the pasta in it. So we're gonna cook that for 10 minutes. Pasta cooks differently depending on altitude, depending on your stove, depending on your water. This is a good medium way to figure out how long to cook it is the cooking time on the box, but really the best way to do it is to taste it. I'm gonna taste it in about seven minutes. In the meantime, let's grate the cheese. So I have this little grater zester thing that I love because it serves two purposes but also because when you grate the cheese with it, it's really fluffy. Pecorino Romano, sheep's cheese from Rome. Pecorino means of the sheep. Romano means Roman. Some people use Parmigiano or Parmesan as we call it in the United States in this recipe. It should not be in this recipe. It doesn't belong in this recipe because this is a Roman recipe. Back in the day where all of these dishes were invented, there were only certain ingredients in certain regions. So you wouldn't get Parmigiano in Rome. You would get Pecorino Romano because there were sheep in Rome, not cows. In fact, Parmigiano Reggiano, the name, comes from Parma, Reggio Emilia, Bologna. Those are the three areas of Italy that are actually certified to make Parmigiano Reggiano. Look at how nice and fluffy that is. I think that looks like enough. So that's the first ingredient, cacio. Here we have the cacio. Let's do the pepe. In the way this dish was traditionally made originally, peppercorns were cracked inside a mortar and pestle. But in our modern world, we have something called a pepper grinder. <laughs> pepper is the star of this recipe. It's very exciting because it's only been like an additional ingredient up until now. So I'm gonna crack a significant amount of pepper in here, at least a full teaspoon. And there is a secret ingredient in this recipe that's already being made while all the rest of this is happening. The water your pasta is cooking in. The water from your pasta has a, an amazing starch in it. In America, we put butter in a lot of things, or cream, we add cream and we add butter to things to make them creamy. In Italy, they use the pasta water and that great starch that's in there to create creamy ingredients. We're actually gonna use a little bit of pasta water to make this ground pepper, this cracked pepper, into a pepper infusion that's gonna infuse our pasta with a really good flavor. I'm pouring in about a quarter of a cup of the pasta water. And now we're just going to you can do a whisk. My mother 
cooking for 60 years, never used a whisk in her life. She always uses a fork. So, hi mom. Looks like tea almost. Now we're gonna make our pecorino cream, which is the secret to cacio e pepe. Because you don't wanna just stick pecorino cheese on top of your drained pasta, it'll be all clumpy. So you wanna make a sort of cream out of the pecorino cheese and the pasta water. So I'm gonna take about half of this pecorino cheese, I'd say it's about a cup, and I'm gonna add about a cup, which is two ladles, of the pasta water. Mix that around. This actually looks like the milk that comes out of yogurt or cottage cheese. It's that consistency, and the pecorino is melting in there. All right, let's taste our pasta. That's pretty good. Let's get my colander. It's been about eight minutes. Put it back in. All right, let's make our dish. I need my tongs. Also need to turn off the stove. So we're gonna put our pepper mixture in first. There's obviously still cracked pepper on the bottom, but now there's a liquid on top of here. So we're just gonna pour that right in there. We're gonna take our pecorino cream, which it literally has now become cream on the bottom. And while we toss, we're gonna pour that in there. All right, now it's a little soupy, as you can see on the bottom. We're gonna fix that by just adding cheese and tossing while we add. With the cream already going in, at the beginning, nice and hot, this keeps it from being clumpy. And it just gives it a nice sauce on the bottom. All right, let's plate this. So you don't really see the pepper in here, but remember the pepper infusion is inside the pasta. I'm gonna get a little more of this pecorino cream and just a little sprinkle, a little crack of pepper, just to finish it off. Mm. I think this might be the best thing I ever made. <laughs> this is so good. So next time, do not go out to a restaurant. Grab some spaghetti, grab a chunk of pecorino, pull the pepper mill out of your cabinet, and go to town. Four things make Casio e Pepe. This is our season finale for our very first season. We want to thank you all for watching and let you know that we will be back this winter with six more great episodes. And in the meantime, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because we're gonna be doing some great featurettes in between seasons with cooking tips and some really fun blooper moments from season one and holiday videos that are gonna help make your holidays easy and delicious. And if you wanna see one more thing for today's episode, click the video.